Hello and welcome. In this video, we're looking at how we can use AI to remove unwanted features in our 360 footage. So here we have a 360 clip of myself sort of near Brayford Paul. Um, and there's a few things I don't actually like in this scene. So you can see under here, we've got these kind of sticking out black bits at the bottom. And what these are is the actual light stand legs and a little bit of a handle that's been captured by the camera. So there are many ways we can remove things. Uh, we can remove things by either creating a patch or um, kind of manually masking it out and doing it frame by frame. But what we're actually going to do in this video is we're going to look at how we can use After Effects' inbuilt content aware for AI to actually remove this uh, unwanted object, essentially. So with my video clip, uh, I've just dragged this into After Effects. I then just create a new composition, keeping the 360 footage composition at 6080 by 3040. I've done no adjustments to the original 360 equitangular footage. So this is already stitched, basically ready to go. Um, what I have done though is I've made sure that my composition is set to only be about two seconds. Now, you may ask why am I setting this to two seconds when the video is actually about two minutes. Uh, the main reason is it, when I'm using content aware fill with After Effects, you'll find it's actually very demanding on your system. So first thing, few, first thing, little notes I'm going to say is you don't want to really do this on a kind of laptop. You want to do this on a fairly powerful machine. You need plenty of RAM, plenty of GPU. Basically, you just need plenty of everything for this to work this way. So I've got my clip here. I made sure that my timeline is set to the very beginning of my clip. And I'm just going to select my video clip in my timeline composition and I'm going to go over to the pen tool. Now I could also use the shape tools to create my mask but I'm going to be creating a mask using the pen tool because all I want to do is I want to try and basically create a mask that goes over and removes all the things I don't want um, whilst also keeping enough data for the AI to be able to do a fairly good job of interpreting um, my scene. So with my clip selected I'm going to click on the pen tool and I'm just going to draw and outline around all the parts I don't want, making sure that I don't get my feet or anything that um, I want to keep. So there we go, I've just created our basic outline here. I'm going to complete my shape by just joining it up. There we go. And by default, this will create a uh, mask for us. And this mask by default typically is an add. So I'm actually going to set this to be subtract. I'm just going to turn the toggle transparency off so you can see what it's done. And what it's done is basically just cut out that area and made, well, it's transparent, obviously. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to now fill in this transparent region. So the way we can do this is, like I said, there's many ways of doing this. But in this video, we're going to be using the content aware fill option. So I'm going to just select my clip with my mask applied. And I'm going to go over to my content aware fill, which should either be on this side here on the right hand side, or you can go to window and search for content aware fill. So with the content aware fill window open and our clip selected, you should see this fill target. And this fill target here should have our area that we've got our mask applied to being transparent, like so, and everything else should be black. So the region that's in black will actually be the area that it's um, taking the information from, so in this case, the rest of my scene. Um, you'll also notice this, we've got a few other options here. So alpha expansion, this is how much um, extra data or pixels it kind of fills in over the edges, and that's represented by this sort of pink outline here. We have our fill method, and we have three options, and I'll kind of talk for each of those um, in a bit with some examples of what the differences are between the three. We have our range, so this is whether it applies to our entire clip, so in this case, entire duration would be the full two minutes, or work area, which is just the, the um, scale of my composition, or what I've got selected with it as my work area within my composition. Uh, we've got create reference frame, and what that does is it takes the frame that we're currently viewing and creates a Photoshop file or image file that would allow us to then manually start to paint in and create our own fill Im uh, reference imaging or texture essentially. And then finally we have our generate fill layer which will do the AI generation for us. So 
I'm making sure that my timeline header is at the beginning of my clip that I've got my mask applied to. So in this case, it's at the zero seconds. And I'm just going to select my fill method to be surface. Now, the reason I'm choosing surface um, is because we're going to be masking out um, our floor, or in this case, like I said, the name indicates a surface. Uh, the camera is not moving, this is a static camera. We're not going to have many, ob we don't want to remove any objects that are moving in our scene, so uh, we're just going to be keeping to a flat plane. Um, and what I'm going to do now, I've got that selected, I'm just going to hit generate fill layer. So once I hit this, this will take a while. This is why I've clipped my, cut my clip down to about two seconds. If I was trying to do this for about two minutes, it would take about a good hour to two hours at least um, to do this. So I'm keeping this short for demonstration purposes only. Now the results that this will generate will very much vary on how your clip is light lit. So do not attempt content aware fill on poorly lit 360 scenes or film. Um, don't try and fill in areas where you're going to have reflections from neon lights that are changing colours or pulsating. Um, and also try and only fill areas that aren't going to have too many things obscuring it coming in front or behind the object we're trying to remove. Okay, so now I'm just going to hit generate fill. This will start to analyse my scene and take pixels from around the region to then fill this region here. This will take us some time, so what I'll do is I'll leave this to run and then we'll come back and look at the end result and actually look at also the differences between the fill methods. Okay, so I've now left my computer to do the analysing and fill for a while now. You can probably still hear the fans sort of ramping up in the background. It does take um, quite a bit of power. Like I said, I wouldn't recommend doing this on a laptop or a computer that doesn't have adequate power or rendering capabilities. If you're doing this um, for a sort of feature film, you probably want to have like a render farm um, and rendering out each clip individually. Like I said, this method I wouldn't really apply to 360 films uh, typically, just because it's quite demanding and 360 films are more system heavy than standard film formats. What you can see here on screen now is our rendered out scene. So if we look at my original clip, you can still see my mask there. This mask is slightly different to the mask that you just saw me create because this is done. I've kind of already. This is one I've done earlier, kind of job. And what I've done is I've done this two more times with different film methods, just to show differences and explain why we use different these different film methods for different cases. So, we what this will do is it basically creates a series of images for each of the frames in our timeline, which is basically like a still. It takes a shot, thick fills in the pixels it thinks should be there and then moves on to the next frame, fills in the pixels which will be there, moving on to the next frame, at each time creating a new image and creating that as an image sequence essentially. So if I was to move my timeline to let's say halfway through, you'll notice here the, the image is a little bit darker. It's actually my lighting, my scene changed, so this is actually darkened with it. Um, now this is where you might get some um, differences kind of creeping in. So this is part of the reason why one, I added my alpha expansion to be um, up a little bit, so I moved it up to about 5 just to take a bit more in. It's one of the other reasons why when I generate my mask, I might want to also look at adding some mask feathering. So if I look, if I just go back to the clip I was done before, uh, if I was to have generated the fill this has it is, without the mask feathering on, we may actually get a harsh line. So I actually kind of um, would have committed a sin if I was to have continued generating this film on this project. So what I always want to do is I actually want to just up the mask feathering just a little bit and that just creates a kind of blend. Uh, that means we don't have this sort of sharp edge that could be generated by the AI system getting a little bit confused. So it's always a good practice to have your mask feathering up a little bit uh, with 360 footage um, where the lighting may change a little bit over time also having your alpha expansion up a little bit and those two values together will help mask and blend the, them, uh, our mask in a lot better. You'll notice here it's picked up a bit of grass that I didn't want it to, again that's because of my, um, the way I drew my mask wasn't quite perfect. If I was to film or do this again I'd actually move my camera a little bit more into payment uh, just to give it more pixels around this corner here so it doesn't start picking up pixels erroneously in this corner. The, this is our surface fill and what a surface fill uh, within our content aware context does is it basically takes the pixels from our scene um, and we use the surface fill for things that don't move. 
So you typically use this for signage. In this case, I've used it for a ground plane. The camera's not moving, the floor isn't moving, nothing is moving on that area that I'm filling in. And that basically just does the best job of interpreting the pixels that it needs to go into the area. I'm now going to show you the next fill method. So the second fill method is our object fill. So object fill, by all accounts, looks like it's doing the same job as the surface fill, but we'd actually use the object fill for moving subjects. So this would be used for if you want to remove a cat from, your, from a scene, or a car, or something that's moving in our scene that we don't want there. It tries to interpret motion as a way of filling in the pixels. It does an okay job. I wouldn't rely on content-aware fill ever as the kind of go-to solution. Where possible, if you can get it right in pre-production or during the production stage, it just saves you so much hassle in the post-production stage because, again, you can't always rely on fixing it in post. And then finally, the, we have this edge, ed, um, this edge fill method. So this is the edge blend, essentially, as it calls it. And what this does is it takes the pixels immediately around the edge of our mask and then stretches them down and creates a kind of what looks like a blur. This is the fastest rendering method for content-aware fill. Um, it's very good if you want to kind of blur out license plates, it's something that you don't need to keep the texture data back in. You could just, you're not bothered about that, or something that's going to be really far away that you don't need to know the wording or the particular finesses of the texture. So again, surface fill is pretty good. I could probably use this just to create a sort of circle on the bottom and it create like a blurred fill underneath the camera. And again, it's about using the right fill method for the right task. But I will say, I think the surface fill does a that pretty damn good job. And again, I could still go in there, finesse it. I could add more masks and add even more content-aware fills to different areas. So if I wanted to remove, let's say, this person here, or remove a cloud, or even myself, for example, I could start masking myself out and then using the content-aware fill to try and interpret that and remove it. But with 360 footage, and for the sake of your own computer and your own sanity, try and make sure that you do get everything you can in the camera right at the first time. Don't rely on trying to erase it or mask it out afterwards. So thank you for watching. Uh, please remember to look at the other methods of removing objects from our scene. We'll be looking at how to create patches, and uh, how to um, just how to basically adjust our scene in post-production in the rest of this Working in 360 series. So remember to like, comment and subscribe, and I'll see you again soon. Goodbye.